Hi everyone, my name is Jen, I'm an author and a book reviewer, and as you will have seen by the thumbnail, I'm here with a rather large book haul again, but if you've been here recently, you know that I have been reading a lot of books, so I am ploughing my way through the books that I'm adding to my TBR, and I'm so excited about these ones I'm going to talk to you about today. These are all the books I've bought recently or been sent for a review from publishers. Everything that I mention, I will list in the description box down below. So because we've got lots to talk about, let's just dive in. Last week, as I'm filming this, it's probably a couple of weeks ago for you, I filmed a reading vlog where I read books that reminded me of my favourite books in the hope that I may discover new favourites. And some of that was successful and some of it was not. And these first two books I want to haul today are kind of an extension of that video because I was thinking about that a lot afterwards. This one is one I requested for a view from Europa. It's Esther Yee's Y slash N, which is being published this summer. It's about an unnamed woman who lives in Berlin and she is obsessed with a K-pop star called Moon. Y slash N in fandom is what you would put underneath a fan fiction title. It means your name, you would put your name. So she's been writing fan fiction about this K-pop star. And then one day I think he disappears from public eye and she's really perturbed by this so she decides to travel to Seoul to try and find him. I'm hoping this is going to be something that I love as much as Idol Burning by Rina Sami because I absolutely adored that and I think there's a lot of parallels going on there. And then the other one is this which I requested for review from Picador which is We've Had to Remove This Post by Hannah Barefoots and this is about a woman who works for a company who does content moderation. So she has to look at all these really horrendous things that people have posted online and decide whether or not they should be deleted. And that's the kind of job that's really gonna impact your mental health and your life, and it's all about that. This, I'm hoping, is going to be an examination of online culture, like with Idol Burning, the subtweet, I'm a fan, but also I'm hoping we'll link in with books like There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job, which was a book in that reading vlog that I mentioned previously that I was trying to find another book similar to, and in that vlog I wasn't able to. So maybe this one will be one that I will fall in love with. This is translated from the Dutch by Emma Rolt, I think, and I don't think I said that before. So yes, very excited about these two. This next one is one that I'm also very excited about. I mean, I should probably stop saying that because otherwise I'll just say it about all of these books. Note to self, I have to remember that every time that I film a book haul, and it's been nine years, but this is a book that's part of the Faber Editions series. And I've only read one other from this series so far, which was Rachel Ingalls' book, Mrs. Caliban, which was one of my favorite books of 2021. I also have They by Kay Dick on my shelves, which I haven't read yet, but basically they're reissuing short classics that have been a little bit forgotten about, needs some extra love. This is Tamush by, not by Jeff Vandermeer, by Sven Holm. Um, Jeff Vandermeer's name was definitely Easier to spot there. This is translated from the Danish by Sylvia Clayton. And this one combines two of my favorite things, which is post-apocalyptic dystopian and people who live in hotels or apartment blocks. Stories about people who live in very close proximity. This is set after nuclear disaster. And is it a hotel or an apartment block? It's a coastal resort, there we go. And that's kind of like a mixture of the two. A coastal resort, and these rich people live there. They've been hoarding provisions. They have radiation chambers to keep them safe. But then this haven, I think, is not very good in the long term and they start attacking each other and things get very nasty. And I really would like to read this book. It sounds like White Lotus at the end of the world, you know? I'm here for it. I also was sent this by Faber, which is Elsewhere by Jan Guy. This is a finished copy. It's one of my most anticipated books of this year. I have mentioned it before because I'm very excited about it. It's out this summer. This is a collection of short stories. I've read her novel, Strange Beasts of China, which is translated from the Chinese by Jeremy Tiang. But this is a book that Yan wrote in English, so is not translated, which is really interesting. It says that she explores isolation in nine iridescent, witty and wondrous tales, both contemporary and ancient, real and surreal, from a group of writers lounging on the edge of a disaster zone to an ostracized Mandarin trying to avoid assassination, and from a woman who inexplicably loses her voice 
to a couple who meet all too fleetingly at a cinema in Dublin. These are strange and beguiling stories of dispossession, longing and the diasporic experience. So yes, on to the TBR, that one goes. Last month, at the very beginning of May, I recorded a vlog where I was trying to find a new favourite thriller. And I had a lot of fun in that video. I also had a bit of a hit and miss success rate, but I also ended up purchasing a few books off the back of that video. So let me show you those. The first one is this, and when I tell you what the premise of this book is, you will understand why I immediately had to buy it. This is Cut to the Bone by Alex Khan, and this is about a YouTuber who goes missing. She called Ruby, yeah, she's a vlogger. Ruby is a vlogger, she has millions of subscribers. One day she goes missing, people think, well, maybe she's run away. Teenage girls go missing all the time but then a video is uploaded to her channel where Ruby is pleading for her life. And I was just obviously very intrigued. So I'll be reading that one at some point. I also bought the second book in the Jack War series by Linda LaPlante. I enjoyed the first one, which was called Buried. Mr. M and I recently have been watching The Night Agent on Netflix. And this series reminds me of that, just in case you've watched The Night Agent and you have been enjoying it. Basically, there's lots about the night agent that bug me. The dialogue is not that great. It's quite predictable in places, but you still get hooked. Just for some reason, it manages to coax you in, or at least it's managed to coax us in. We were mocking the first few episodes, and now, now we're very much invested. And I feel a similar way, and I mean that in an affectionate way, <laughs> about this series, in that it's a detective series that ticks lots of tropey boxes, but does it in a way that feels like you're in on the joke as a reader. Like Linda LaPlante has been writing thrillers for decades and she knows that you know what she's doing. So she's just having a bit of fun with it. I'm not gonna read you the blurb because it's the second in a series and that would be silly. Then in the thriller vlog, I read Tim Logan's book, The Curfew and really loved it. Most of his books, if not all of them, as far as I'm aware, are standalones, which is quite exciting for thrillers, to be honest. So I picked up two more. This is Trust Me. This is about a woman who's at a train station and another woman, I think, comes up to her and says, could you hold my baby for a minute? I don't know if she says she needs to go to the bathroom or something. So she says yes, the woman hands her her baby and then she never comes back. And the longer the woman sits there, the more uncomfortable obviously she's feeling. She looks down at this child and she sees there's a note attached to the baby which says something like, don't take this baby to the police, I'm trusting you. That sounds like a stressful position to be put in and I am intrigued by that. And then I also bought The Catch, which is a novel about a dad who is very suspicious of his daughter's fiance. And no one takes this seriously because lots of fathers think that, you know, no one is good enough for their daughter and all of that stuff. But in this case, I think he's right. I think that maybe this man his daughter is planning to marry is really not okay. Uh, and again, intrigued by that premise. I also bought four books, which I will not read you the blurbs of because these are four, four books in a series. I read the first book in that thriller vlog, which was called The Puppet Show by M.W. Craven about a detective called Washington Poe. And he's a disgraced detective. He was suspended at the beginning of the first book and then a murder happened and his name was left on the body of the victim. So he was called back in and obviously helped to solve it, has been reinstated, but goes a bit rogue, you know, doesn't follow the rules, which people pretend to not like, but secretly they do seem to appreciate it because he gets results and goes places that they won't. So it is an interesting dynamic. I had a good time and therefore I bought the other four that are currently available in the series and I think that another one is coming out soon. So I will head to these at some point. They're set in the Lake District and the Lake District is pretty much a character within the book, which I love and I love the Lake District itself. It's a very moody, atmospheric place perfect for a crime setting. Next, I received a copy of Poetry London in the Post. This is the spring 2023 issue. And I was sent this because I'm one of the contributors for this. The poem of mine in here is from my new book, which is called Please Do Not Touch This Exhibit, which is coming out in September. And I, I'm gonna just say I would love for you to pre-order it if you haven't already done so and the premise of it entices you. It's my second full-length collection published by Blood Axe. 
and it's looking at childhood growing up as a disabled kid in and out of hospital, reflecting on that as a disabled adult who's going through IVF, using magical realism and storytelling as a way to process all of that. And I thought I would quickly read the poem that's been published in Poetry London because, as I said, that is from the collection and that'll give you a taster and you can decide whether or not you think you might like to pick it up. Pre-orders are super important for authors just so that publishers and bookshops know what demand there is for a book. You can also ask your library to order a copy in as well. All links are in the description box down below. But the poem that's published in this issue is called The Hospital Is Not A Place For Bodies. The hospital is not a place for biology. The girl is asked to choose a set of eyes from a bed of irises. She blinks through the iodine, knowing that this is back to front because, of course, she cannot see them. Instead of choosing with her hands, she is wary of bursting them like bath pearls. She speaks to the eyes directly. She locates their little eardrums and manages to charm them. She requests they travel with her down the rivulets and the three of them paddle out of the hospital garden. Doctors call the girl a pirate, give her a ship that she suspects is just a billet, but at least she can pretend these sheets are sails, that saline seawater. And though the mattress may be waterlogged, she is familiar with this vertigo, her webbed flamingo skeleton tilting on its young sea legs. The hospital is not a place for languages. When the girl has half grown, the magicians cut open her skull to excavate her shark teeth, teeth that have swum up to her cheekbones and wrapped themselves in sinew, the archaeologists anchor them with silver hooks and latch them onto pulleys. They give the girl a metal mouth. Her lips part to reveal a pirate ship. The men hold a mirror and she struggles to speak, remembering a ghost story about a creature whose mouth opened so wide it swallowed the sea. She watches as a salt tongue slow grows barnacles. The men tighten the ropes, hoping pearls will avalanche down her face. They wait, but nothing moves and so... The magicians open and close her puppet mouth. The archaeologists admire their craftsmanship. Both ask the shark girl to grin, then swim away. The hospital is not a place for history. When the grown girl visits the medical museum, she is all awash with skeletons. Bodies hauled in by doctors, hung up like brittle carpets. She gapes at the way their bones bow. So many shapes. So many ships. She slips their names inside her brain and walks with them for company. Now, when far-flung doctors come to town and ask her for a show, she lets them stroke her sewn on skin whilst listening to shanties. She half drowns and they applaud. Afterwards, they name her a good little sea creature. They wind her up mechanically, marvel at how her brined eyes blink, at how she's mostly starfish. If you like the sound of that, and you would like to check out my poetry collection. I will link it in the description box down below. It's out in a few weeks time. Okay, on to the rest of the books. We have The Dream Builders by Andrilla Mukherjee. And this is a book that I've been sent for review and I'm really intrigued by it because it's told from the point of view of 10 different characters. And that can either be really successful or a little bit draining. I'm hoping that this book really pulls it off. It's about a woman called Manika Roy who returns home to India to mourn the loss of her mother and she finds herself in this completely new world. And this new world is narrated by 10 different characters. Characters. And I think having so many different perspectives will reflect that overwhelm that she's feeling at being in both a new and old place. So I'm looking forward to that. Then I requested this for review because I saw Alice Slater reading it, lovely Alice, and she said that she was adoring it. And I read the blurb and I thought, yes, that definitely sounds like my cup of tea. Thank you very much. It's called My Husband by Maud Ventura and it's translated from the French by Emma Ramadan. The blurb says this, from outside she has an enviable life, a successful career, stunning looks, a beautiful house in the suburbs, two healthy children and most importantly an ideal husband. After 15 years together she is still besotted with him but she's never quite sure her passion, passion is reciprocated. She meticulously prepares for every encounter they have, always taking care to make her actions seem effortless. She watches him attentively, charting every mistake, punishing him accordingly to help him improve. And she tests him, setting traps to make sure that he still loves her just as much as he did when they first met. Until one day she thinks that maybe she might have gone too far. 
The cover of this is giving me um, Night Bitch by Rachel Yoda. The premise is reminding me of Mrs. March by Virginia Fito. And I am hoping that this could be a bit of a favorite. Speaking of favorites, this is Chimera by Alice Thompson. This is a review copy that I requested from Salt. This is her new novel. And I have spoken about a book of hers that I have loved since I started this channel, which is called The Book Collector. It was a book I read a very long time ago now, but I often think about it. It has lots of gothic references and was very playful whilst also being very disturbing. So this is her new book. I don't think she's had one out in a while. No, her last book was The Book Collector, which came out in 2015, which will have been the year that I read it. So it's the first book that she's published since then, eight years, so that's very exciting. I'm just reacquainting myself with the blurb and it's giving me warm and fuzzy feelings already. Not because this book feels warm and fuzzy, I just mean it sounds disturbing and that gives me the warm and fuzzies. Is that, is that strange? So this is about a woman called Artemis who is a scientist and a dream investigator. This is a deep space novel. She is traveling to a distant moon in her ship, the Chimera, to investigate organisms and try and see if it can save Earth's climate crisis. But it says that it becomes clear on her journey that there are other disturbing reasons for the mission. It has sophisticated AI, AI, AIs? AIs with synthetic bodies and nothing is quite as it seems, even desire. This is a story of transfiguration, dreams and identity. Are we just a template of memories and experiences or is there something that makes us uniquely human? Yes, I mean, this sounds like Ex Machina meets Alia Whiteley's work. Um, and if it's as disturbing as the book collector, then sign me up. The opposite of disturbing. I purchased Garlic and the Witch by Brie Paulson, which is the second in the Garlic series. It's a graphic novel with the cutest illustrations. The first one was about Garlic going on a mission to talk to a vampire who'd recently moved to her local neighborhood. Everyone had volunteered that she should do it because vampires are supposed to be scared of Garlic, but Garlic was just pretty terrified. She just wants a quiet life. She's a nervous bean, okay? Um, so I don't know what this one is about. Actually, I can't read you the beginning of this blurb because it has a spoiler in for the last book. But the second part of the blurb says, Garlic is experiencing another change. Finger by finger, she appears to be turning human, which Agnes assures her that this is normal for garden magic, but Garlic can't help worrying. What if she doesn't want to be human after all? Lovely. I bought a copy of another Claudia Pinheiro book because I read her book All Yours last month, absolutely loved it. Previously had had a, a hit and miss relationship. Like one of her books was my favorite book of the year. And another book that I read was one that I DNF'd. So it was very perplexing. But now that I've read two that I loved, I felt confident in buying a third one. So this is A Crack in the Wall by Claudia Pinheiro and it is translated from the Spanish by Miranda France. The blurb doesn't seem to give too much away. It's about a man called Pablo who is dissatisfied with his life as an architect and is dissatisfied with his marriage to, he's attracted to someone who works in his office who he thinks is having an affair with his boss anyway, but then a new woman joins their team and brings to light a crime that happened years before, a crime that everyone in the office wants forgotten at all costs. I don't really wanna know more than that. So that one is going on the TBR as well. Next up, we have five chapbooks which have been sent to me from Strangers Press. Strangers Press publish work in translation. This is their latest series of chapbooks publishing work from Lithuania. And I talked about all of these in my most anticipated summer reads. And I will link that video in the description box down below because I talked about them all in detail very recently. I won't recap here, but I will link the website in the description box down below if you want to go find out more and hadn't watched that video. And then I will also obviously talk about them when I read them. But I love Strangers Press because they publish short work, which means that you can discover authors who you may never have heard from before. And it may be that they have full length collections or novels out that you could go and check out if you liked these, but these are great in their own right as well. So I'm very happy to have been sent those. Next, I have two 
disability memoirs that have been sent to me. This is Go The Way Your Blood Beats by Emmett de Monterey and this is about growing up in London in the 80s as a queer kid with cerebral palsy um, and those are obviously things that I'm interested in reading about and then we have Polly Atkin whose work I really love. This is Some of Us Just Fall on Nature and Not Getting Better and this is about her relationship with at nature as a disabled person it says after years of unexplained health problems Polly Atkins perception of her body was rendered fluid and disjointed when she was finally diagnosed with two chronic conditions in her 30s she began to piece together what had been happening to her all the misdiagnoses the fractures the dislocations the bone crushing exhaustion the not being believed some of us just fall combines memoir pathography and nature writing to trace a fascinating journey through illness a journey which led polly to her current home in the lake district this is not a book about getting better this is a book about living better with illness so i really really love polly's poetry in particular very happy to have these two on my shelves. This is another one of my most anticipated releases for summer. This is Tomb Sweeping by Alexandra Chang. Beautiful cover. This is a short story collection which says it is compelling and perceptive. Tomb Sweeping probes the loyalties we hold to relatives, to strangers and to ourselves. In stories set across the US and Asia, Alexandra Chang immerses us in the lives of immigrant families, grocery store employees, expecting parents and guileless lab assistants. Pushkin Press have a new set of Japanese novellas coming out later this year. They published a set a few years ago now. I think there were five in that series. I think there's there's definitely a Miko Kawakami and a Hiromi Kawakami because I've read those. I'm pretty sure there's a Yoko Tawada, a fourth one, I can't remember the author of that one. And then this one, which I've been meaning to pick up for a while, so I now have done. I wanted to pick this one up now before the new series comes out later in the year, because I would like to read those too. This is Spring Garden by Tomoka Shibasaki, and this is about a man who's recently divorced and becomes a little bit obsessed with the woman who lives in his apartment block. And as I have already mentioned in this video and have mentioned in recent videos, I'm really interested, intrigued by books where people either live in a hotel or, or about them staying in a hotel together or they live in an apartment block in really close, sometimes uncomfortable proximity to each other and pay too much attention to each other's lives, you know? It is rife for drama, love it. So yes, I will read this at some point and this one is translated from the Japanese, oh, by Polly Barton, who we love on this channel. Next, I bought this, which is Nobody, Somebody, Anybody by Kelly McClory. And when I read the blurb of this, I was reminded of Indelicacy by Amina Kane, which is one of my favorite books of last year, and also My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshveg. This is about a woman called Amy Hanley. She has a job as a maid, and in the summer she's gonna be taking her exam to become an EMT. She's failed it two times before. In the meantime, she's very happy to be scrubbing toilets and revising, but the closer she gets to her exam, the more anxious she feels about it, so she decides to create this placebo inspiration program for herself to make her feel better about her life. And I think she also becomes obsessed with the woman that she meets. So it's, you know, bringing together lots of things that really intrigue me. I also bought this, which is Long Live the Post Horn by Victor Short, which is translated from the Norwegian by Charlotte Bolsund. Victor Short wrote is Mother Dead, which is um, one of my favourite books of this year. It was long listed for the International Booker Prize this year. I have also bought her book, Will and Testament, which I plan to read, but the premise of this one intrigued me too. It's about a woman who is fed up with her job. Her colleague leaves unexpectedly one day and then an assignment lands on her desk, which completely changes her life. She is following the course of one undelivered letter. It says, as her numbness yields to mania, the ball is set rolling on a strange and transformative six months. The blurb is a bit elusive, a bit cryptic, but I enjoy that, so that is fine. This next book is one I've been sent for review. It's coming out in September. I don't wanna read the whole blurb because I don't wanna to know too much about it, but I'll read you the very top of the blurb, which is what intrigued me about it. This is called Every Drop is a Man's Nightmare by Megan Kamali Kakamoto. And the top of the blurb says, if I can open it, here we go. A haunting collection of stories that weaves Hawaiian mythology with a rich sense of place for fans of Mariana Enriquez and Carmen Maria Machado. So, I mean, that sounds like a recipe for good things, doesn't it? And finally, 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 we have Banana Yoshimoto short story collection. This is Dead End Memories, which is translated from the Japanese by Asa Yanida. Now, 
I have read a few of Banana Yoshimoto's novels recently and really not enjoyed them. I used to love her writing so much, like 10 years ago. I'm hoping that maybe I will still love her short stories because I think I like her ideas. The novels that I've read recently have felt quite meandering and a bit loose. So I'm hoping with the short stories, she'll have a really sharp idea and it will be contained, executed in a very um, articulate, succinct way and then we can move on to the next idea. That is what I am hoping. The blurb says that this is about five women who, following sudden and painful events, quietly discover their ways back to recovery. One of the stories is called House of Ghosts, which sounds great. I don't want to know more than that. I will dip into this in the coming months and see what I make of it. So, those are all the books that I wanted to talk to you about today. As I said, I will list all of them in the description box down below. Have you read any of these? Would you like to read any of these? Let's chat about them in the comment section. If you are new to my channel and you would like to subscribe, that would be lovely. And if you enjoy my content and you have the means to do so and would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that would be very kind. Support over on Patreon allows me to keep creating free content for everybody on here and funds my time making the videos accessible and all of that good stuff that is also linked in the description box. That's all from me. I will see you for another video next Sunday and I'm sending lots of love. Bye.